Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Let's get going. I think I'm pretty close to being set up. Oh, you know what? I am missing a couple of critical things. I do want to see chat today. There we go. Alright. We're going to make another another example in here. Um, I think uh, files in JSON would be a good example. Or singleton, yeah. What do we have in terms of examples? Let's do our usual fetch. Oh good, 357 is on master, which means I don't need to be on the branch anymore. What is left? Oh, okay, there's that. We'll come back to this little gem there. Yeah, we're gonna take a peek at the uh, at the milestone. Yeah, I saw this yesterday. Position three underscore d, two underscore d. There's a bunch of those in the modules. Oh, that's neat. Okay. Come back to that. We're going to do some examples today. Yay, examples! Now, what do they call that in Godot itself? Um, we load up Hello World. Oh, goodness. Godot is not showing. Let me fix that. Oh, it is now. Okay. Size isn't quite right, though. Let's fix that. There we go. That's better. It's under project. You know, pro project settings, and there's auto load. And auto load, when you add things here, they can be ticked as a singleton, so they load before everything else. And they're just global. So I say we make a singleton. 
example. Alright, now what is the order that you do this in? I think first... We create a new project. Create a new project. This is going to be similar to these others. Gado Rust Singleton. Say, what is the path? A Gado Rust. GL ES3 or 2? It doesn't matter for this. Just do 2. There we go. And toss it back in the correct size. Okay, there we go. Now, and we should have singleton. Get okay, status. Get to add singleton. Then let's follow the tutorial, the uh, documentation online for how to then set up a Rust project inside of that. Or maybe I did this backwards. Was I supposed to create the Rust project first? Ooh, I don't remember. Requirements, usage. Example. Uh, we do cargo init. So you create an example, or you create a project, then you go into the folder and do an init. Alright, let's do that. Whatever happened to my git gutter? Where'd that go? commented out.
Okay, everything's already there. Good. Let's give COC an update real quick. Oh, Rust Analyzer 1 updated. Interesting. Out of curiosity. Oh, that's the current time. <laughs> Morning, everyone. How's your Wednesday going? that I want to see if a new one came out I don't think so but yeah just master and staging okay oh you can actually see the uh, little window there that's interesting I didn't realize that hovering over that would let me let me see into it All right, back to the examples. So after we go through and create the lib, I have to toss some dependencies on there. Oh, interesting. I wonder how they're doing that for the other dependencies. Examples, hello world, cargo. Okay, they're using relative paths here. Singleton. <laughs> I saw the slash example here and thought I was in the examples directory. Tried to CD back into the scene. Whatever. Okay. Cargo build. Now, inside of the hello world, I want to see what they have in terms of the GDN. And, excuse me, the GDN lib. So they have these targets for x86 and the windows. Oh, x11. That's probably Linux and BSDs and whatnot. Okay. So I'll have to do something similar to that then. Hey, cat peasant, you're the first one to say anything, unless I missed it. Somebody missed it. Cat peasant wins the shiny pebble. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> it's Wednesday. So I'm going to be copying some stuff in to hear from uh, that other project that I have. Um, I'm going to try to make an example for how to do certain things with singletons and maybe files.
we'll see. All right. All right, my uh, wife and daughter came in, and my, wife, my daughter wants to play video games. Of course, like no, it's a, it's a school day. You have to do school. All right. Let's get this set up. So we're going to be copying in a couple things. Um, is it in view three? I think it is in here. Local storage is really what I want to copy over. So we're going to copy local storage to source go to Rust examples singleton there we go source singleton source anything else there that's probably good yeah. Then we'll have to come up with some sort of contrived example, maybe like a, a checkbox or something that that when you start it, it remembers its state from last time. Um, I think I have a piece like that, which is which one? Oh, development toggle. Copy that to the same place. There. Okay, and that's going to be the beginning of our example. Oh, not live. We want um, singleton example. Singleton lib. There we go. Rename some of those first. Move development toggle. Just a toggle. Toggle, toggle, and local storage, local storage. Now those look fine. Oops. Good. Okay, now local storage isn't there. Why is it complaining about this? 
unresolved modules. So just because I haven't been in the file. Oh, Rust Analyzer. Cheeky. Go back to toggle, rename that from development toggle to something else. Let's rename this just to toggle. There we go. Why does it want to write curly brace there? So weird. Oh, native class method is not implemented for local storage. Really? Ah, oh, that's right. We don't actually register that. We probably should for this example, though. <laughs> I've forgotten the, the name of that. Uh, toggle was it inherit. OK. And what should this inherit from? Like a, just a node, isn't it? Node? Now here I think I think it's talking about name. Name needs to have a node. I actually don't want it that way. I would like some interface for Rust and an interface for G native. So these are going to be separate. to return a self. There we go. And this one we do have to register though. We have GDN local storage and then local storage. 
This one is for rust. We're going to have just some wrapper functions that uh, that are available there. Okay. Let's clean up some of this. Basically, any of the pub functions down here. Why, why delete file? Who calls delete file? Delete calls delete file. Should that even be public? Probably not. Oh. Yeah. What else? Load. That'd be a good one. Save, set. the same one again meant to get uh, get her default there it is Last one, good. How was I actually using this? <laughs> We'll create a new one. Okay, now for the rest of these. Let's see, we have a number of these that 
all need owner stuff, don't we? Let's see, I have eight multivim cursors. How do we go forward in that? Can I just search for self? And they all go to self? They didn't all move, did they? That's a bummer. That really is. Lots of pass throughs. Of that storage. Load. Oh, this is all like hash map. Um, just add some spaces here. Yeah. Morning, Carter. I don't know if I said that earlier. Good morning. Where? Why? Why that? Hmm. 
There we go. And now it's more like a drawer. Now these are the errors that we had been seeing in the other project, which is fine. All right, CLC is just confused. Or maybe I didn't have it saved. I don't know. GD. Come on, Vim. GDN local storage can. Oh, it needs methods too. Yes. Export every one of these that has a node. Okay, I should be up for that. Oh, that's right. Owner always has to be the second value. You guys remember that uh, commercial with the camel? Happier than a camel on hump day. Yeah, that one's fine, that one's fine. Oh, type parameter is not allowed in exported functions. Okay, so in this case, these are all just going to be variants or Godot strings. Let's see, what was the restriction on the key? Or set with the last one? No, no, not that one. 197. So in this case, we're inserting into the dictionary, and the dictionary can take a variant as a key, can't it? Why? Yeah, it's just because they have two variant EQ on them. Okay. So maybe up here, instead of all of the Type magic, we just use variance. Oops, missed one. Those appear to be happier. Key variant, default also variant. Not very many surprises there. Check to see if it has key, which is now variant. Thinkbot Labs, morning. How's it going?
Uh, what else do we have? Error. Okay, now we're back to the same problem that we had when it was in our own project. Instead of just the example. So we're trying, let's see, this is in load, isn't it? Yeah, load file. So we get the file name into whatever type we want, which is probably just a Godot string. Yep, Godot string here. Oops, that line there. Create a file, and here we're using the Godot APIs. Now this file, it's not a Rust file, this is a Godot file. Checking to see if it exists. And the nice thing about um, the Rust files is, not Rust, I said Rust. There's all sorts of great things about the Rust files. Um, but about the Godot file is really how it works on phones and, and other places where you, you just don't normally have access, or even in GD Native, um, excuse me, not GDNF, but when it gets, uh, when Godot gets compiled to the web, they even use, what was it, even the, um, the IndexedDB API on the browsers. All right, so we go through, we load something as text, right, load the file as text, great. Now we parse it. So we get the JSON Godot singleton bit. Parse the text that returns some or none. If we get something back, then we check for an error. But we're running into this this issue now. Let's see. We're gonna check. Get the bigger error, which I think is going to be just the same as above there. Let's make sure. Wow, it's got a good check going. Check's normally a lot faster than that. Method not found. For an object ref generated JSON parse result. All right. So we can go look and see what is the combination of these two things. How do they keep us from accessing that that function? All right. I guess first, let's make sure it's plugged in. Is there an error function on JSON parse result? JSON parse result, Gini native API, okay. Inherits reference. Methods, error, returns a result. The return to object is automatically managed by ref. Okay. So it inherits from ref, which means DRF is probably going to get us to reference. Yeah. But that's not really helpful here. Let's go look at what was the other type? Object ref. Yeah. 
Polymorphic smart pointer for Godot objects whose behavior changes depending on the memory management method of the underlying type and the thread access status. Now, we didn't have shared or unique in that, did we? In the uh, result here. It just says ref. It doesn't tell us the type of ref if it's uh, shared or unique. Reference counted, that's... Turning a safe view. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Oh, I like the table. That's nice. Ecton Dev, good morning. I'm trying to uh, use some of the new changes that, that have been going in. Using as method argument or return values. All right, API methods can be called directly slash as ref. Let's, let's toss one of those on there. If that doesn't work, we'll dig in further. No method as ref found for object ref. Why? Okay, let, let me let me show the code again. We're loading some text uh, from disk, right? And then the parse result of the JSON is supposed to be able to take that and look to see if it has an error. Okay, if it has an error, let's open that in another tab. JSON parse result. So this is either going to be a unit or an error, which is how we tell whether or not it has an error. Okay. So JSON, Godot Singleton, parse. What does Godot Singleton actually return? Let's look at JSON. Godot Singleton. Returns a reference to the Singleton instance. Okay. Safety. All types of the Godot API have interior mutability. Yes. So we do the parse. Oh, it's shared. Okay. So there it is. The underlying object must be valid and exclusive to this thread during the lifetime of A. Interesting. So why is that? Why is that for JSON parse? 
Let's go back to local storage example. If I'm parsing text, should that result in something that's unique? Okay, we're gonna make this work. Then I'll put out the PR, or rather a draft, and comment on what I think is is odd here. So we'll call assume safe on that. And it's gonna be the same thing here and here, and then probably here. No, um, no. A little overzealous with that. Oh, it's not get, it's just result. Interesting, and now at this point, after I've deserialized something that is on, let's think through this again. So that's coming back as shared. Obtaining a safe view. All right. Assume unique. Yeah, I think we should probably be using assume unique here. From shared or thread local to unique. I want to do this. Well, why isn't it unique to begin with? Because it, it seems like JSON parse would result in what? Unique value. Let's see, do they describe unique up here? Unique. References to manually managed types like ref, node, unique. Okay. Can't be aliased or sent between threads. I say. I see. So I guess in this idea, it's not a scene graph object. Right? Uniquely managed things are scene graph objects, whereas shared things are going to be like a variant, yeah. They're safe to alias, it can be sent between threads. It can also be taken as method arguments, okay, converted from variant. They can't be used directly, instead it's required to obtain a, obtain a safe view first. Okay, and that's below, which is what we're doing. All right, so we should be really doing this, assume unique. Using as method arguments or return values in order to reference thread safety statically. The ability to be passed to the engine is only given to some reference types. Specifically, they are all owned unique references Owned and borrowed shared references. Okay. okay, let's switch that to this then. There we go, with some unique.
Now at this point, we either mark this whole thing as unsafe. What are we doing with this? No, the whole thing shouldn't be unsafe. All right, we're gonna change change the channel. Way too distracting. There we go. Ah, and this is where self dictionary is being changed from unique to shared. Hmm. What should that be? We go back to the description. Shared references to manually managed types. Is a dictionary a manually managed type? I think dictionary had something special on it. New tab. All right, too many tabs. It's dictionary. Core types dictionary. Okay, it's, it's not one of those. I don't think it should be a node-like setup. So let's do shared. Dictionaries are probably rough counted in Cadell. And then why is it when you create a new one, you get a, um, the other kind back? So I have unique, I want to go shared from unique to shared into shared. All right. Does new always return something that is unique? Yeah. Oh, I see. At this point, we're saying this thing's rough counted and whatnot. Does this mean we're going to leak it?
Now we, we created this thing on, where did we create this? We created this in Rust, which means that it's managed by Rust or not. Oh, I don't know. All right. Where's new? It's a bunch of new functions. Wow, we have default for shared for new. Oh, why? This is a reference kind of collection. Is that what we were seeing up here for dictionary? Oh, okay. Inter, inter, okay. So one five two zero nine. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I mean, it feels like we, we want it to be unique, right? I see, but somebody might be accessing this accessing this from across threads. All right, so how would that happen? So we have our GD native little thing there. I guess it's possible that somebody might call, let's say, load or... Let's say, um, I don't know, set a key or get get a key from across a different thread. Now this would be through the same GD script thread. So this local storage here is going to be. To me, it seems like it's going to be local because it's going to be inside of something that is local. It's going to be inside of a node. Ah, actually, if we go back up to the top, do we still have... Oh, we got rid of it all, didn't we? Yeah, that all that all went away. The um, hash maps and whatnot. Maybe it's in here. Oh, user data. Here it is. All right, customizable user data wrappers. Choosing a wrapper. Uh, we could do that. Yeah, if they take self, we don't need them to be exclusive. So we could use this one probably. Oh, I don't think it's send and sync though, is it? Because it's, um... or we'll see. Was it RW lock data? Yeah, RW lock data. Uh, 
Oh, it's in native script. Okay. Well, in that case, let's go report a bug. So I'm going to adjust my chair height real quick. How's everyone doing? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is anybody, uh, let's see. I might have some people out there trying out the new uh, GD native stuff. That's an interesting, uh, what was it? An interesting post on... Hacker news. It was hacker news. You're failing in programming. Oh no. There we go. Okay, got this. That's not good. chair out of the way. There we go. Issues. Or was that one? Native something, right? Native... Native script, yeah, here on the left. Okay. Let's see, I'd, write, I'd like to write this in kind of a generic way. Um, user data dogs for... Okay. That's fine for now. That's the story of your life? Oh. I, I still think programming is like, like uh, language, right? The more you use it, the better you'll get. So even if you're not doing so hot right now, just keep using it every day, every day. And if you have anything that's like perplexing you, just let us know. Okay. Native script.
There we go. Let's get rid of this giant line. Much better. Oh, there's no RDW lock data? Really? Oh, lowercase w. RW lock data. Java and OOP stuff. <laughs> Uh, Josh Block has a good book. Uh, what is it? Effective Java. Is it Josh Block? Yeah. Great book. When I was doing uh, Java coding, I had that on my desk. And I referenced it all the time. There's so many goodies in there. Alright, so that means our, our local storage here. Can this actually be not shared? I mean, can we make that local? Because what would be the point of having it local? If it's local, it is... So right now it's shared. The act as raw pointers can be Alias can be sent between threads. All right, but with dictionary, do I get this? Or is dictionary? Oh, is it over here? No, that's not it. It's a reference counted collection with interior immutability. So the type state, type state access the type state pattern in Rust. Okay. This one's getting. Um, let's see, where's my notes? <laughs> I need to read up on this. Simple example, the living and the dead. Okay, what are type states? Type states are a technique for moving properties of state. Interesting, okay. The dynamic information a program is processing into the real type static world that the compiler can check ahead of time. Type states are a broader topic than the specific pattern I discuss here, which is why I'm calling it a type state pattern. Special acts, a special case of type states that interests us here is whether they can enforce runtime order of operation at compile time. Here are some of the examples of properties that can be enforced by the type state pattern in Rust. I assert I don't have implementations of all of them. Buffer can only be translated if you have checked that it's valid UTF-8. Sure. You must not perform any IEO operations on a file handle after it's been closed. Makes sense. Messages can only be sent to the client after the authentication has succeeded. Interesting. Once you've done A, you must perform either B or C, not both, before you can do D. In most other languages, we would have to handle these checks at runtime with errors exceptions. Why not get? <laughs> we 
or we might get lazy and not check them all instead of mentioning them in the documentation, hoping people read it. With the type state pattern, we can prevent code that breaks these rules from compiling. That is awesome. That's really cool. All right, simple example, living in the dead. Has two states, living and dead. It has open and closed. The file has open and closed. Got it. At this point, we don't have access to a file. We open one here. We have access to a file, and it's open. If opening had failed, we would have gotten an error. Yes, and because you have the question mark there. Rust and Better Book also has a section on this. Oh, really? Oh, thank you. I will put that next to the other one. Copy link or address. Oh, and if anybody wants this, toss that out there too. And then we can drop it. Signature of drop is every type. Yep. Takes above value, not by reference. It's moved into drop. Might look like RAII to you, and you're right. In Rust, most values of the RAII pattern, most cases of the RAII pattern are also applications of two-state type state pattern. Okay. Okay, let's skip the other language piece. More than one living state. Separate type. Just gonna skip through a little bit. Type state in the wild. Saturday. Variation. All right. Well, some of this I want to actually read in more depth, but I'm not going to do that on stream. All right, so the type state access tracks whether the, whether there is unique access or it's shared. Okay. And and if it's shared, then some of these are not are not available. What was it that we were looking at? Oh, uh, error on the JSON one. So parse returned shared here. And why would the JSON parse result be shared? I see it. It's rough counted. And because it's rough counted, it could be accessed by multiple threads at the same time due to the interior immutability bit. Got it. Okay, which also means that if we try to access functions on it, like error, some of these are only available if... Come on, show us the code. Oh, that's right. That's a gigantic file. Is it? Actually, it's not that big. Or did it just only pull a portion of it? Looks like it might have been smart enough to just pull a section of that file. <laughs> or, wait, wait, where is it? Oh.
All right, that might be another thing. When we look at the docs, it would be helpful to have um, actual for formatted code here. Because without, without more information in the docs, I want to know when is this function available? I, and I see that this is unique, but it doesn't tell me when these are available. Are these only available on unique or are they only available on shared? That I would like to know. Because it seems like something like error here. We're not mutating anything. It's all, well, it's all interior mutability, isn't it? Or like all this stuff. If we go back to dictionary, wherever that went. Oh, okay, that's done. Let's create a new issue. Let's look at set. Dictionary, insert, there it is. Yeah, we're inserting and It feels like there's information missing from the documentation. TRF smart pointers. I wonder if we should have been using instance before. What does instance give us? It'll create an instance of a class. Persistent instance to a Godot object. Yeah, with a Rust, Na Rust native class attached. And we don't want that for dictionary or these other types. Okay. We'll get this. I think I do want that as unique. I don't want that into shared. Cannot be shared between threads safely within local. Okay, Jane. Okay. The trait sync is not implemented for a consponder unit. Wow. Wow, now we're getting this at compile time. That's amazing. That is that is so much better. Um, all right, so if that's the case, and we do need that to be shared, and use into shared, what does into shared actually do? Let's look again. 
So unique dictionary. I'm going to go into shared on this. So what is self.sys for a dictionary? It is a good dictionary. And here we'll have dictionary shared. I thought dictionaries were reference counted anyways. This is where it kind of feels weird to me. Like, why do we have a unique dictionary versus a shared dictionary? Can I create a shared dictionary? I can. I can say new shared. I say, and that just calls new and into shared. That's good to know. I didn't bother to look at new shared. Was that on dictionary? Yes, new and new shared. Oh, that's good to know. I see. Then this is for Impl Dictionary shared, and this is for Impl Dictionary, isn't it? Okay, this is becoming a little bit more obvious now. So in certain cases, we have operations that we can do on elements that are shared. I did not see this group header here. This is really, really important. That is that is really important. What about other elements like, um, oh goodness, yeah, this thing. Our JSON parse result. It doesn't have any. Is it because it's only unique? Oh, that doesn't make sense because I mean we're converting it into shared to get the um, get access to these functions. I was going to open a new issue. Formatted dogs. Consider using formatted dogs for. I don't know, release, not, not release builds, for. I don't know, I think. Um, We might already have that GD native cargo to Do we have features? We have bindings. We don't have formatted here. Let's go ahead and do that real quick while we're in the middle of this. Because that would be really nice to have at the moment. We'll add cargo to Tommel, the workspace.
All right. Not that one. This one is fine. <laughs> Not that one either. Uh, GD native. Cargo to Tommel. Features. Formatted. That'll be in. Bindings. Actually, how do you pass the feature flag down? The GD native is our top level crate, and then we have a bunch of interior crates. Dependencies, optional true, yes. Usage in end products, okay. Packages. All right. I must have missed it. What is it? Conditional compilation, optional dependencies, clusters of optional dependencies. All right, and in the, this example there, most of these are optional. And oh, we have default which is specifies the, the package name. Features can be used to re-export features of other packages. Okay. Got it. There it is. Formatted. That's going to be inside of is it GD native bindings? Something? I thought it was in. No, it must be slash. Okay, yeah, it's formatted in here. Okay. Cargo doc features equals formatted.
Okay. That'll probably take a minute. Um, the reason I'm, I'm considering this is I use local documentation all the time, and I think it would actually be very useful to be able to see formatted documentation. And to, to expose that, I think, would make this avail uh, the docs.rs then have formatted code, generated code on it, which would also be nice. All right. Let's see, here we will, while that other thing's building, let's pull out this bug. Re-export, GDN native formatted. Oh, there it goes. All right. I need to have it on by default. That's it. Close down CI and local builds. So let's reference this here. Let's see, in GDN of cargo to Tamil. Should make formatted. Actually, that's a good question. Um, should, might. Okay. We'll toss this out there. 507. I think this is all we have to do. The documentation should be formatted now. Let's go look. We were inside of, was it um, JSON? Result. Then we called on parse and we got this JSON parse result. And we went down here to error and I wanted to see that. And it took forever to load, which is expected because it's a gigantic file. But hopefully it takes us to the right place in the gigantic file and doesn't crash, crash the browser. Oh, much better. Okay. Nice. And now we can see, like, okay, this is impl of that. All right, so now back to our previous question. Well, hold on, let's let's finish this off first. All right. To 
add that. Get commit that sham. What was that? That was five hundred seven. Six seven. that out there good now back here that one's done good <laughs> I got lost okay over here so this JSON parse result we create a new one ref self with thread access unique so I get that. But why couldn't we call error on it? Derives debug. And there it's closed. And here we have Godot object for parse result. Dereffing it to mutable and non mutable. Subclass. Okay, good, good. It all seems fine. So we have the method table. Yep, I get it. Oh, what's this? Ah. And it's done. All right, so why is it that we couldn't call error on that on that ref? Let's go look at ref. Is it only going to deref if if it's a safe deref between the current uh, ref kind and the access that we want?
Okay, so we can get DREF access if either T is reference counted, which is, is that all? Oh, we're thinking about JSON result. And access is not shared, or T is manually managed and access is unique. Yeah, we did not create one of these. And when we create a JSON result, it's unique. Oh, there's the documentation on it. RT is manually managed and access is unique. So in this case, thread access is unique. Well, it's, it's hard to say from here because it would have been the other the other object that created it. Huh. Uh, peeling this apart. What does ref init from sys give us? Self with unique, huh? Okay. Let's check out the last one. Need to update that. All right. All right, that's going to take it a minute. So the problem that I was having was that this ref would not dereference the JSON parse result for us. Because it's got a ref. Let's see, we have what, what I think is unique. It's probably unique. Ah, uh, but T is probably reference counted and it's unique. How do I know if it's reference counted or not? So if I look at this, all types in the Godot API have interior immutability. Okay, here, memory management. The lifetime of this object is automatically managed through reference counting. I see, so it is reference counted and unique, which means that we have to change one of those to be able to get access to it. Oh, actually, and it's not shared. So we get access. This will dereference if T is reference counted, which it is, and access is not shared. So it must be shared then? Hold on. How can we tell? So in the code. Yeah, yeah. What's our JSON parse result? So here we have a JSON parse. So we get a Godot singleton, we go to parse. And what's that gonna return? All right. 
JSON. Nope, not that one. JSON. It does singleton. Here we call parse. And that's going to return shared. So it's a ref to a JSON parse result that is shared. And if we look over here at the DREF, oh, here we're in, same thing. Where'd it go? Oh, here. Where Tia's reference counter and access is not shared. And we're not going to, going to be able to change the reference counting on this. So the only thing that we could change is it being shared. All right, now is this, is this available on all of the other types as well? Coming down here to, what is this? This is JSON. If we look at DRF for this not there um, probably because this type doesn't need it what other types might need it let's go look at um, Godot string string Godot string all right it does reference counted string type And this isn't actually in anything. Um, how about Node 2D? So if we look at Node 2D, let's get something off of here. Scale, translate. Uh, most of those are kind of numeric. How about label? Label has strings. Text. All right, and that returns a good string. I say there, it doesn't look like there's anything that you can do to mutate that. Um, I was looking for some sort of return that was also rough. Huh. Okay. So yes, in this case, we have to assume it's unique. So we do the parse. So it's starting to come together. And in this case, we have assume unique because it is shared at this point. We want to assume it's unique so that we can access those those value, those uh, methods on it. Interesting. Now you can deref if TS reference counted and access is not shared. And it was shared. Where else does this show up? <laughs> Is this at the top and I just wasn't paying attention? Manually manage types, reference kind of types. 
Shared references to reference counter types like ref act like arc pointers, uh, arc smart pointers. New references can be created with clone, and they can be sent between threads. The pointer is presumed to be always valid. As such, more operations are available even when thread safety is not assumed. However, API methods still can be used directly. Users are required to obtain a safe view first. All right, which is why we had to call the um, that other function assume unique. Okay. Thread local references to reference kind of types like ref that add the ability to call API methods safely. Ah, maybe we should have a thread local instead of two unique. Unlike unique references, it is unsafe to convert them to shared because they might, because there might be other thread local references in existence. Okay. Obtaining a safe view. So it is shared. Assume thread local. The reference must be local to the current thread. We want this one. Whoa, what I do? There we go. Oh, is it only after the error that I can do that? So I did assume unique, which is here. I think we should be able to go this route too. Assume thread local. Oh, I see. It's still unsafe, but because we have shared, doesn't? Yes, yes, it was shared. Actually, that's a question for you. Why is the result of JSON parse shared? I'm going to toss that in Discord for a moment. I'm going to take that code block that we had before. That I just copied on screen there. Why is the result of JSON ours? 
um, shared and not unique. So that's the question I'm ask, asking. Why is the result of JSON parse shared and not unique? Do we know that already? Let's see, before we hit enter. I presume it's because it's a reference counted type. There's a response coming because it's generated question mark <laughs> uh, that's funny in order to call any functions on it I have to make it thread local or what was it uh, or unique because of the rules in DRAF All right, let me toss some little backticks on here. All right, so we're going to do that. What was our conversion again? Here's our conversion table. Because if I do assume a thread local on that, because it's currently shared. Oh, where is assume safe? I don't see assume safe. Oh, assume safe is here. Oh yeah, that actually, I think this is more what I want. Assume safe on that. Oh, the question, um, I suppose, uh, yada yada, okay, is there any reason you can't use Serdate to parse the data? I was trying to not bring it into the game code. All right. So let's use assume safe, which is interesting. Okay. We're not going to do that there.
All right, so we call assume safe on it so that we can get access to those because of the ref rules. Yeah, we have to guarantee that this is safe because the compiler can't. Okay. All right, that looks better. Let's see, I think there had been something in here for Singleton. Let's see, where was the DRF bits down here? Dictionary insert. All right. I'm responding to Toast Eater in uh, Discord at the moment. Saying that, uh, let's see, they're saying that uh, using Godot APIs will always be more cumbersome than Rust ones. Which is true. Which is true. I'm saying Godot APIs also do, let's see, have nice wrappers. Depending on the 
Was? Actually, I haven't thought about them. Okay, back to the code. Um, no method insert on this dictionary. <laughs> now, why is that? This is... Oh, but interesting. It's on get, just not insert. Is that because it's mutable here? So we need to get that as a mutable ref. Let's come back here. There's our table, awesome table of awesomeness. Is it shared currently? It is shared, okay. Assume safe on that. Insert. Oh, because it's not a ref. Uh, it's not. It's not a ref. Does it just not have insert for key and value? Insert, there it is. Key and value. It's not mute. Oh, it's. Oh, that's different. So self doesn't need to be mutable here. Is this supposed to be? Come on, where is insert? Oh, that's in unique, not in shared. It's in dictionary unique. All right, coming back to our table. So we have to do assume unique. All right. Okay, now it's unsafe.
Effortlet, thank you for the follow 12 minutes ago. And SKFK1320, thank you for the follow. All right, so this looks like it's coming together. So no method erase on there either. That and these don't have to be mutable anymore. Ooh, how do we feel about that? I don't think we can use read write lock on this. Actually, do we even need that anymore? No, probably not. Wow. So dictionary changed so much. Do we have, what, what is the thread safety on dictionary actually? Okay, uh, I wanted to check. <laughs> we didn't even get to like running anything. Um, I'm gonna come back in here for just a minute. Godot Rust, let's see. Comment on this. Oh, I didn't add it. Uh, it's already there. reply it's already there my little smiley face i want a better smiley face oh they don't do like cool smileys you gotta work on that github and doesn't that go to the right place no no it doesn't it doesn't go to the right place oh my goodness view file here. Will that go there? Yes. Okay. We actually want both of these. Okay. Fix this. Oh, nice. I like that. That looks really nice. All right. Good there. Yep, 
Yeah, that was good. Got that. Starting to get the hang of this whole thread safety ownership bit. Um, I'm definitely going to have to go and read some of this other stuff. All right, and no air race on this, probably for the same reason. What did we use before? Assume unique. That's going to take me a while. No, I don't think we can actually do that, can we? Um, let's check the safety on the dictionary itself. It's also an unsafe on there. We might, oops, let's put it outside there. Good. Let's go to Godot. Red safe APIs in Godot. There they talk about, okay. Script arrays and dictionaries. NGD script reading and writing elements from multiple threads is okay. But anything that changes the container size is not. Okay, requires locking mutex. So erase. Good. We'll have to use a mutex for remove and insert. That's nice. That, that is nice. That's really nice. Okay, so we could probably do a read write lock on this. So this is going to be a dictionary shared. We're going to toss a RW lock on this. Let's pull that in. RW lock, good. There's that. New into shared. And do we want it into shared? I think we want new shared. There we go. Toss that inside of RW lock. All right. RW lock new again. Now, in this case, we are loading the file off of disk, and we're about to convert this variant to a dictionary. Toss that inside of the RW lock. Okay. Now for our mutations. Save file. Ah. We're not mutating here. Oh yes, and the lock might be poisoned. So we'll just unwrap there. Inserting though, this one we need a right lock. Okay. Hmm. 
Same thing here. Let. Has dictionary dot read dot unwrap okay this one's changing the size so we need to lock uh, have a right lock on this one self dot dictionary dot uh, what's going on there oh first we check to see if it ooh what do we do? Time of read, time of use. Okay, let's get the right lock outside. Cannot move out of dereference. Oh. No? Oh, did we get to like the next stage of errors? Oh yes, that doesn't need to be mutable. Wow, we did. I think we're actually doing clone now, aren't we? I mean, clone, that makes it seem like it's... That's an actual trait. I wanted the one on uh, string, good old string. Okay, so it's just doing new ref. Should we be using new ref? Is that still a thing? What was it? Uh, insert and delete, was it? No, not delete file. Remove. Alright. 
Azraf isn't there. Nura? Oh, because it's not in scope. Oh, but that's in... Uh, I don't have access to that anymore. Is, is it in the documentation? GD native new rav. Okay. Oh, leave that one there though. Alright, that one still needs... Okay. Yeah, we'll toss a couple of those back on there, it's fine. Delete file. Good, good. Self test storage as mutable. Oh, fine. Because I talk a sumi nature. That's mutable. What else? File name moved. Yes. New ref. New ref on that. Wow. Yeah, all of those mutable references going away. Okay. 
Cannot move out of dereference. Cannot move out of dereference of rewrite lock right guard. Move occurs because value has type dictionary, which does not even like copy. All right, we don't want to copy it out. That would be bad. Okay, same thing. I think you need to do like a asref or something on there. Um, didn't this work elsewhere? Oh no, we have the same problem in two places. Okay. Two step, how's it going? Uh, we are currently working on a little example. Um, Trying to get some of my code compiling in the form of an example uh, with a GD native Rust project. Uh, using the uh, bleeding edge master branch, trying out some of the new uh, new bells and whistles. Start starting to get it. Starting to get it. Just barely. <laughs> Yeah, we just we just flipped everything upside down, which actually matches more of what uh, Godot is doing internally, because Godot does a lot of inter in interior mutability. So now now we pass things around by uh, by shared reference. Here, where, where's a good example of that? Like, like, uh, I think if I have to go back up here. Oh, here's owner. No, like in these cases. These are now shared, shared references, instead of uh, basically taking ownership of them, which is fine. And now if you need to do something that, that mutates them, like over in the other file and toggle here, owner, as you can see, we call set pressed on it, but it's not mutable right? because of the interior mutability of the object on the Godot side. Um, so that's different. I'm getting used to that. So far, it's nice. Um, I think the challenging one here is wrapping up this dictionary. I have this uh, local storage thing that I'm trying to trying to get working. It's got a read-write lock with a dictionary in it, and it's currently shared. So let's see, where do we, here's the first error. Move because of the type. Yeah, dictionary does not implement the copy trait. I don't want to call, I want to call, what do I want to call on that? Um, Azraf. All right. Read right lock. So we're calling right. And this will give us DREF if if what? Yeah, of course, there's no deer up there. Strange. 
cannot move out of dereference of that. Why, why does it think that we're moving? Oh, because of the assume unique. Ooh, because assume unique takes a self. Let's see, in this case, dictionary, I'm, I'm writing this out real quick. In this case, dictionary is in a RW block. Assume unique uh, takes ownership of it. Which is not allowed here. Oh, you don't think the sharedness is needed here? Got it. Now, why did we go from local? Uh, trying to remember why we made that change. Oh, it was unique, right? You could put it in a mutex. I see. So dictionary unique is send. And I could put it in a mutex. Uh, and let's see, a two-step. What have you been saying? Oh, good to see you're making some progress. I don't know how you can grok rust. It's a little like walking through concrete at times. Oh, well, it depends on the concrete. Is it like fully set? Then it's like impossible to walk through. But if you have like a nice slurry, it's not all that bad. End up debugging the language in the program at the same time drives you nuts. It is a cool language. I really like it. All right, dictionary unique is send. So I can put it inside of a mutex. RW lock requires sync. Ah, I see. So that's not going to work there. Okay. Let's finish cleaning this up real quick. Oh, actually. Uh, oh, there's just one here. Okay. Let's see what error we get from that, though. Curious. Ah, and in this case, we convert this to a dictionary and... Okay. So that's two dictionary and using the fancy. This this table sh this should be like a little printout that you little decoder ring. All right, and in this case we are given a shared, and we have to go to something else. Now for lifetime of T, but what is T going to be? T would be of self. Oh, we could probably do that. We assume safe on that. Um, oh, but that's not going to be one of these types, is it? Which is what would be needed later. We'd have to do like a assume unique. All right, that needs to be unsafe. Okay. Okay, 
then we're gonna have the read write lock issues. We'll come up just a minute. Now, in this case, we don't have to assume unique. There we go. Because it's already unique. Oh. Which makes that, that a little safer. Sometimes it helps to learn patterns so you can utilize other people's headbangings instead. <laughs> Okay, this looks pretty good. All right, I've got to get going. Um, oh, this has been a good one. I'm starting to use this. I think it needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, we didn't even do, like, use any of this stuff inside of Godot. Like, got this empty project here with, with nothing. So I'll have to wire that up, probably do that tomorrow. Um, or maybe I'll do it tonight after work. I don't know. But it'd be good to, to try it out. All right, y'all. Let's see, anybody have a Raider? Acton Dev is streaming. We are going to raid Acton Dev. Acton Dev, we're coming for you. All right, I'm gonna load that up in a browser. We're gonna start the raid. Ecton does some doing, uh, been using Rust for doing some audio processing, which is beyond me. I don't know, that, that just seems a bit more, uh, <laughs> a bit more complicated than like Rust lifetimes. All right, so it's coffee time. Until next time, y'all, bye-bye.